What up, gang? Back. Beautiful Sunday afternoon. 149 local time. Headed back to my girlfriend's house. Just left my grandmother's house. Went to visit my grandmother. Went to visit my aunt. Went to visit some friends. Had a pretty good weekend. Went to the movies last night. I saw Avengers Endgame in 3D. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to make it to the uh, 8:30 movie last night. I knew they had a. Um, I knew they had an 8:25 for 3D. So I got to the movies around. 820 so I'm like I, I I know the movie was gonna sell out but I didn't go to the movie theater in like a big city like I was I was a little I was in Smithfield North Carolina you know that it ain't too big of a city if I would have went in Fayetteville it would have sold it out but I went in Smithville I uh, shout out my boy Jimmy who told me after I left the movies that he was in Smithfield so I don't know where he was at then, but shout out my dog, Jimmy. Jimmy is the same guy that told me uh, that since I didn't set my trailer brakes, how I blew my brake chamber out. That's Jimmy, same guy. Works at BTC, real stand-up guy, one of my good buddies that I talk to while I'm out on the road. So yeah, I had a pretty good weekend, man. Went out to eat last night, went to a restaurant called Grandson's uh, Buffet Restaurant, Country Soul Food Restaurant, Smithville pretty good restaurant the movie was three hours long I got got to the the reason I got the 3d because the regular movie was sold out so I was like man I didn't want to I like to see the previews too and see all the other movies that's coming out so even though I got there kind of late I still got there at a good time because they they were just starting to show the previews by the time I sat down I also saw the preview for the new x-men movie uh dark phoenix that comes out in uh June or July. I am a, I am a movie man. If y'all didn't know that, I watch movies. That's one of my favorite hobbies. Watch movies, make YouTube videos, take pictures. I I, I am part time professional photographer as well as truck driver. I got a lot of shit. I got some pretty good hobbies, man. Watch football. Watch basketball. Right, what, else, what time is it? 1.52 now. I'm trying to hurry up and get back to the house before this uh, Golden State Houston Rockets game comes on. I am going for Golden State, if anybody wants to know. I'm probably about 20 minutes out from the crib, so take this time out, run my damn mouth, like I always do, run my damn mouth, until y'all get tired of it. Give y'all a part two. I'm gonna give y'all a part two to why I left Hornady and came to PNS. Cause I dropped that video yesterday. Let's check it out real quick. Don't try this at home. Don't try this while you're driving. Let's check it out real quick. I dropped the video yesterday. As of right now, I got 1,400 views, 74 comments, 73 likes. Out of those 74 comments, Probably about 35, 40 of them is me responding back to people that commented on it. 73 likes. This video has more likes than the other two videos I dropped before since I've been to PNS. And so uh, I just got another comment. Hack man, how long are you willing to stay out? How long am I willing to stay out? I don't, I don't have a specific time frame of how long that I want to stay out. I don't have no specific time frame. If I gotta stay out two weeks, if I gotta stay out three months, two months, it don't matter. I don't have no specific time frame about when I wanna stay out. But I like to watch this other guy on YouTube as well, uh, Trucking Answers, uh, the white guy, I can't remember his name, but I like to watch him. And I remember watching one of his videos and he, he was saying, truck drivers, they wanna make money, they wanna, they wanna go home when they wanna go home. So, you know, if I stay out two, three weeks and I say I want to be home 
let's say I want to be home May 15th. Let's say that. I want to be home May 15th, but I've been out two, three weeks. Okay. When May 15th comes around, I want to be home. I don't want to be trying to find a load to get me home. I, I need hey, I need to have a plan where I'm headed home well in advance of that day that I want to be home. That's, that's how I feel. I don't have no specific time frame that I can stay out. Because I can stay out. I ain't got a problem staying out. But when I want to get home, I want to get home. I came home this weekend, they didn't want to come home. But they didn't have a load for me to run over the weekend. I, I don't know if I said it in my last video. Uh, my dispatcher told me that on Thursday. That, that it wasn't, because she asked me Monday. She was like, do you want to stay out this weekend or do you want to go home? I said, I want to stay out. But when Thursday came, she was like, we don't have anything to keep you out over the weekend. But we can run you through the house and you deliver Monday morning. So I didn't have a choice but to come through the house or just sit at a truck stop without a load and not make any money. So I took the load to get me through the house and also to make money while I'm sitting at the house because I'm only an hour away from where I got to drop it at right now. Oh, man. So, yeah. That's how I ended up home this weekend. And I don't regret coming home because I got to see the movie last night. I got to visit my grandma this morning. I sat with her for a little bit. Drunk about four cups of coffee. Uh, took my grandma, gave her some cash. Gave her a little bit of cash money since my grandma takes care of all my stuff while I'm out on the road because I'm not with my, um, my ex-girlfriend. I'm not with her anymore. Uh, and so I got my grandma to take care of. My grandma is the one handling all my stuff while I'm out on the road. Hey, okay, hey, family is where it's at, man. Family where it's at. Yeah, my grandma takes care of everything for me now. Hey, I'm a grown ass man. I'm 33 years old, but I don't have a wife, so who else is gonna do it? Who else can I trust to take care of my personal finances while I'm out on the road other than my grandmother? So yeah, I did I did enjoy going to visit my grandma today. So the, so I, I came back on this video today. You know, I, I, I think I might have hit pretty much every point yesterday or why I left Hornady, came to PNS. I, I pretty much I pretty much hit every point. And and the main reason was it was about, you know, it just wasn't for me. I'm not gonna say anything negative about Hornady because just because it didn't work for me doesn't mean that it won't work for the next person. So if and the guy that commented and said, oh, they, they send me two loads at a time. Yeah, they send me two loads at a time, too. They send me a load, and before I even drop it off, they send me another load. Yeah, they would see that. But I, I worked at Melton before I came to Hornady. So I, I know when you on mileage pay, Melton will give you some miles, man. They will, that Melton will run your ass to death. They'll give you 1,500, 2,000 miles like it ain't nothing. So, 600 mile run, 800 mile run, 300 mile run. When you on mileage paid, that's that's nothing. That ain't nothing right there, man. That's how you make your money on that mileage. You run a percentage, it's, it's a little bit different. As long as you in a good freight lane, you can go, you can run 1,500 miles and bring home more than the person that ran 3,500 miles on mileage, you, you, you could bring home the same thing they bring home on percentage. So when this opportunity came up for me to go to PNS, bruh, I would have been a fool to turn it down. I would have been a damn fool to turn it down, man. And I wasn't even thinking about PNS until my buddy called me. And, and he, he got to hook up with some field recruiter named Chris Wooten. If Chris ever sees this video, Chris Wooten, he's a field recruiter for PNS. I, I never met the guy, but I know he drives a truck with a wrap on it. If y'all ever see the guy on the road. I never met this guy named Chris Wooten. But I know he's a bad motherfucker. I know that. I know he can pull strings to get you in the door of PNS. I know he can put in a good word for you, get your ass in there. Yeah, man, PNS been at the top of my list since I first got my CDLs. They they been at the top of my list. 
This, I mean, they, I, I, I do say that it came out of nowhere, and I got this job, but um, I, I, I been knew about them, but like I, said, I didn't have the experience to go straight to PNS, and now that I'm at PNS, hey, this, hey man, dealing with dispatchers at these other companies, Hornady, I had a pretty good dispatcher, I had no problem with the guy, pretty nice guy, but in Melton, those those dispatchers at Melton. They, they will try you. They will definitely try you. And if you don't stand up for yourself, they, they will run over you. But that's that's anywhere. Every company got bullshit. And I and and I love Melton. I had no problem with Melton. Dispatchers talking shit to drivers, hey, that's just part of the game. It's just in how you gonna deal with it. You gonna you gonna say, are you gonna let them talk to you any kind of way? Oh, oh yes ma'am, no ma'am. Oh, I, I, I talk, I do say yes ma'am, no ma'am, but I ain't gonna go with no bullshit. Yeah, that's just part of the game, man. It's all in how you wanna deal with it. Yeah, I had fun at Mel. Hey, sometimes I, used to, sometimes I used to be out driving. I, I might get bored and be like, let me call my dispatcher just to talk shit. Like, I had a female dispatcher named Christina. I, I think about something she said smart like the day before and I just call it out the blue just to fuck with her like you, you told me this What? Hey, I just I just did that shit for fun man it is what it is man it's a love hate relationship they got a job to do their job is to dispatch your job is to drive of course they're going to push you but that's what they're supposed to do it's all in how you deal with it you going to take it personal or you going to chalk it up so you know that, hey that's it's just business I had I had a couple negative comments yesterday on my on my video. I had a couple negative comments. Like, oh, this is your third company. Oh, why you do this? Why did I hey I did what's best for me. That's what I did. I did what's best for me. That's what I did. At the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. I'm putting my life on YouTube. I'm giving I'm giving y'all a little snippet of my life and my career. You know, I I make it public. For y'all to criticize me or for y'all to congratulate me, either one. I'm putting myself out there on a public social media platform. So, yeah, it doesn't bother me, man. I appreciate the support that I get from most of y'all. Because I'm going to say this. The goods definitely outweigh the bads. If I get if I get 10 comments on my video, 9 out of 10 of those comments are going to be positive. Because a lot of y'all agree with me. 9 out of 10 of those comments are going to be positive. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the little negative comments, you know, people saying stuff like this and that. But I'm not one of those YouTubers that gets up here and, and wants to beef with the subscribers, or beef with the other truck drivers. That ain't me. I'm doing this for me, man. I like to go out here on YouTube and the people that like to watch me and they get inspired and you know, that's what I do it for. So I do it so when I, 20 years from now, when I'm 53 years old, and maybe maybe got like 20 trucks and you know i'm sitting on the patio drinking cognac i got my driver calling me hey, hey d what's up man i'm over here i can't make it i'm be like an hour late you know that's that's gonna be me 20 years from now wearing these same kind of shirts with no t-shirt on out there playing golf maybe maybe i'll be playing golf i'm not too much of a golfer i, I could play top golf i could play top golf <laughs> Yeah, I'm not too much of a golfer. Maybe when I retire, have some free time, I can actually hit the the real golf course. But hey, I love Top Golf. If if y'all never been to Top Golf, I highly suggest y'all check it out. It's a fun place, man. So yeah, I do. I do. I feel good about my decision of coming over to PNS. Damn right, I feel good about it. I got to see my grandma today. Got to see my family. Without even asking to come home, they ran me straight through the house. I think I might have hit on it a little bit yesterday about that Flex Dispatch. Like they advertised, Flex Dispatch. Hey, it, it definitely, every load I got so far, I, I had an option where I wanted to run. Hey, you can't beat that, man. I don't, I don't know who else does it like that. I know I'm gonna ride this company out. 
<laughs> other two companies I was at, I, I didn't even have time to use my insurance benefits. <laughs> Cause that's how fast I was out of them. But those two companies I was at, I got what I needed from them. I got my experience from Melton. I got my experience from Hornady. I learned a little bit of stuff. I learned what to do, what not to do. And that's all that matters. That's that's life. Sometimes you gotta play the cards you dealt. Something that's that's what a lot of people do. They get their hand, they play the cards that they dealt. Sometimes it's what you gotta do. I know a lot of I know a lot of times when you, when you get your cards, you get your first let's say let's say you get your first hand. Fucked up hand. You like, man, I don't want to play this hand. I, I want to throw it in. But so you either got two choices. You can you can play the hand, or you can throw it in, or you can keep the hand. You take take a gamble, see what comes out on the flop, or you throw it in, and that's what I did. You you gotta your goods gotta outweigh your bads. Play the cards you dealt, or you throw it back in. That's that's what it is. That other person sitting across the table from you. They, they don't give a damn if you're going to throw it in. They don't give a damn. All they want to do, they, they, they want to win too, just like you do. A lot of y'all want to win. I want to win. But if you got a fucked up hand, you got a fucked up hand. You ain't got no choice but to fold that hand. And and that's really what it came down to when I was at Hornady. I had a fucked up hand. For what, what they were dealing to me, it, it just wasn't, it was, it wasn't what I needed. It wasn't what I needed. I didn't need to be bringing home seven, eight hundred dollars a week. I didn't need to get a five hundred mile run over three days. That ain't what I needed. If, if I'm gonna be on mileage, and and I can't deliver nothing till Monday morning, I need to get fifteen hundred miles on Friday. That's what I need. I just pulled up to my truck. Just got back in town. Yeah, you see it over there. Y'all wonder why I pulled up to the truck? Because I got to get some eye drops. My contact solution is in the truck. And my eyes red because I, 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 my thumbnail was longer this morning, but I um I cut it off. I scratched my eye, put my contacts in. So let me go over here and get my uh, eye drops real quick, and I'll be right back. All right, back game. Now I'm about to head to the house. My girlfriend, her family's having a little dinner, a little dinner today. And she wants me to go. That's why I might seem like I'm a little dressed up. <laughs> not, not too much, just a little bit. Yeah, so I'm about to head over to the house. All I want to do is sit, sit there and watch a basketball game. That's all I want to do. But she said she was just going to show up just a little bit, show our faces, and then we was going to dip right back out. What time is it? 2.09, game come on at 3.30. I might, I might miss the first quarter, but I, I highly, hey, I need, to, I need to get my rest for tomorrow so I can get back on the road. That's going to be my excuse between, between me and y'all. So I'm gonna tell her, hey, I can't stay out too late. I'm tired. I gotta, I gotta lay down and, and get some rest. And just so happens while I'm getting my rest, the basketball game is gonna be on. <laughs> yeah, I'm about an hour, about an hour and twenty minutes from where I gotta drop at in the morning. But I do, I do hope this week that I get to run down south. I do hope that because last week I started out, dropped the load in North Carolina, and I went to uh, Virginia. I peaked the load up in Virginia. I had to drop it off. Where did I drop that load? Oh, my first load last week went to Massachusetts. So right off the bat, my ass is up north. The load I'm dropping tomorrow is going to uh, South Carolina. So since I'm already going to be in the south, maybe, maybe they might send me to Alabama or Mississippi, somewhere like that. Maybe I get to run down south this week. I fought, I fought enough mountains and traffic last week. So maybe, maybe I'll run down south and 
see what's going on down there. Whew. I think I pretty much told y'all why, hey, why I left Hornady and came to PNS. That's that's about it. It was about the money. Money makes the world go round. If I got a chance to come over here and make twelve, thirteen hundred company driver every week versus making eight, seven, eight hundred a week, I'm gonna take the, I'm gonna take the bigger one. And then like they they do got the ninety day after ninety days you start the process to go lease. That's that's what I want to do. I wanna. I want to get myself up there, man. That big league, start making that big money. That's what I want. A lot of people always say, "Well, don't don't do the lease." Hey, I I don't I don't I, I don't I don't say I want to do the lease and do that when it, when the times come for me to get to that. You know, that's I just I just need to have the income coming into the bank for a little while, just just to show, just to see little big deposits and shit like that. Until I'm able to get my business credit up, so maybe I go. I don't want. I really don't say I want to finance because if anything happens and you and and some shit happens, you know you stuck with that debt. But you know you go the lease route. Anything happens, you walk away from it, clean and clear. I don't got an issue. I'm not hurting for money, I, really. Really, not, really not hurting for money. So I'm, I'm good on that. I'm just having fun doing what I do. I'm having fun starting my trucking adventure. I'm having a lot of fun. I don't know if y'all realize it or not, but hey, I like what I'm doing. I love being part of the flatbed game. I love being a truck driver, period. I do have tanker and ha tanker and uh hazmat endorsement. And and doubles and triples. I do have all three. But I haven't ran across the right opportunity for those types of jobs just yet. I, I have had job offers, but I just haven't I just haven't took them because I want to stay flatbed. I have hauled hazmat loads when I was at Melton with on a flatbed, but uh, as of right now, I know PNS doesn't haul any hazmat. And I've seen double flatbed trailers, like the company that just went out of business. I've been seeing all about it on Facebook. What's the name of that company? That they stranded all the drivers, and you know they went bankrupt. Stranded all the drivers. I forgot the name, but y'all, y'all might have seen it on Facebook. Matter of fact, I tell you, that same guy that I was talking about, the truck and answers guy, he he put a put a video up about it. Let's see, truck and answers. Oh yeah, buddy, truck and answers. Hey, that's a smart guy, man. I like watching that guy. As a matter of fact, I, I checked him out to see if he made a video on PNS, but he didn't make one on PNS. So maybe y'all can hit up Truck and Answers. What's his name? John? Oh, Falcon Transport. Seizes all operations, stranding drivers. Yeah, I've seen them on the highway. I've seen them pulling double flatbeds. That's, hey, that's a highly, highly unfortunate thing that happened to those drivers and they got stranded. Without no pay or nothing like that, that's that's pretty fucked up. Hey, shit happens, man. Shit happens. Complacency kills. That's what I'm gonna name this video. Complacency kills. If you get complacent doing anything in life, just because you feel like at that point in time that's what you need to do, and you don't have no other choice but to but to stay where you at because you feel like oh. I don't need to do this. I don't need you are never going to get ahead in life. Complacency kills. You in the military, you go to Iraq, you go outside every morning, you smoke a cigarette, you don't put your helmet on, you don't put on your body armor. You say, "Oh, I do this every day. I go outside and smoke my cigarette at the same spot. I don't need my body armor." So one day you go out, you don't put on your body armor, bam, you get shot in the chest. That's being complacent. These companies don't owe you no loyalty. They don't owe you no loyalty. You see how that company went out of business just like that? And left those drivers stranded. They don't owe you no loyalty. But y'all gonna tell me, oh, oh, you need to grind it out here. You need to do, man, fuck that. Take control of your life. Take control of your life. If shit ain't working for you, you gotta do what you gotta do. If this shit ain't working, if you know you ain't making enough money doing this, get the fuck out of there. What's the point of wasting your time? You don't owe anybody no loyalty. 
Just like that, that company shut down without warning, sent their drivers an email or text message or whatever. Just like that. You're done. You're stuck. Wherever you at, I seen something about, you know, some drivers didn't even have fuel to even drive the trucks home. These companies don't owe you no loyalty. You, you got to be loyal to yourself. You got to do what's right for you. That's what it comes down to. What you want to do. You want to, if you know you in a fucked up situation, y'all, if any of y'all watching this video right now, if you working at a company and just because somebody told you to grind that company out for one year and then find something better and you got six months to go and you know it ain't working for you, hey, start working on your exit plan. Start working on it right now. Don't, don't do it just because somebody told you that's, that's what has to be done. No, don't, hey, don't do that, man. Hey, rules are meant to be broken. Rules are meant to be broken. Who who wrote these rules? Who wrote these rules? That's somebody told you that's 60 years old. Oh, you need to stay with your first company for one year and then find something. Who told you that? Man, my phone rings every day. I get calls from companies almost every day. Somebody calling me about a job. I, I don't even answer the phone. I, I, just, I let it go to voicemail. I listen to it. I listen to who it is. J.R. Sugar. They've been calling me like hell. I don't even know how they got my number. They've been calling me like hell. J.B. Hunt. This guy's been sending me text messages. Even even telling me, oh, if, if you don't want to work for J.B. Hunt, if you know anybody else that, that needs a job, you know, p pass on my information to them. You know, hey, every day I get uh, Snyder. I get emails from Snyder all the time. I had, been, I had looked up Snyder a while back about flatbed. They never had anything available. Like two weeks ago, I checked my email. They had a flatbed offer that was up there. But I'm, but I'm good. I'm riding, I'm riding it out right here at PNS. I'm riding it out, saving my money, getting it up there until I can move on to the next step. So yeah, complacency kills. I, I didn't have a name for this video, but now I know I'm going to name this video complacency kills. That's why I fucking did what I did and came over here. I had to do what's best for me. I advise y'all to do the same for yourself. Do what's best for you. Don't let nobody tell you what you're doing is wrong. If you feel like it's right, then you do what's right. 10-4. Your boy's out. Flatbed game.